Hello, we've finished number uh, four. Uh, this is Neil Donald Walsh's book, Conversations with God Exposed, teaching number five. Okay, we finished number four with the challenge uh, is of one of discernment of words that are written, the difficulty in knowing the difference between the messages from God and data from other sources. Discrimination is a simple matter with the application of a basic rule. Now here's the basic rule, folks. Mine is always the highest thought, your highest thought, your clearest word, your grandest feeling. Anything less is from another source. He continues. Now the task of differentiation becomes easy, for it should be not difficult even for the beginning student to identify the highest, clearest and grandest. Yet I will give you these guidelines. The highest thought is always the thought which contains joy. Okay. Truth. What God is saying here, Neil Donald Walsh's God, little g, not a big g, is saying that the highest thought, the way to discern truth, is, the, is through one of the ways, is the highest thought. And he's saying, if anything contains joy, then it's the truth. The clearest words are those which contain truth, right? And the grandest feeling is the feeling which you call love, joy, truth, and love. Okay. Now, these three are interchangeable, and one always leads to the other. Matters not in which order they are placed. Having with these guidelines determined which messages are mine, and which have come from another source. The only question remaining is whether my messages will be heeded. Okay. Now. I could say the writing on rides at a circus or at an amusement park, riding one of those big things that go up in the air, and then down and up and down and roller coasters. I could say that brings me great joy. I could say there's nothing more exciting and more joyful than riding a roller coaster. And that could be an expression of my truth. The truth is, I'm not any, uh, I've never been more excited in life than when I ride a roller coaster. In fact, I could say I would do anything to experience riding a roller coaster once a week. I love it. I love riding roller coasters. I'll do anything so I could ride a roller coaster once a week. Now, it might be an extreme. What Neil Donald Walsh's God is saying is if I experience joy, if it contains what I perceive is the truth, and it contains love, well then it is the truth. It is a message from God. Well, you've just got a message from God. I love roller coasters. What about uh, uh, someone bashing his wife? Could bring him great joy. He could say the truth of the matter is she only learns when she gets hit. He could say, that's how my father loved my mother. And I'm just repeating what my father taught me. He could think he's loving his wife. It could bring him joy to discipline, what he calls discipline her that way. And he could say, this is the truth of the matter. She only learns when she's hit. Would that be a message from God? Is that a message from God? If God said, wives, obey your husbands, or if your husbands, if your wives don't obey her, beat her. That's the truth. Does that sound like a nice God? Does that sound like a message from God? You know, in some religions, it's quite all right to circumcise a female. In some religions, it's quite okay to make the women not dress, uh, show any form of dress. 
In some religions, the women aren't even allowed to leave the house. They say that God has said that. Can the truth really be things that bring us joy? Things that we perceive are the truth. And things that we love. We can love our cat. Our cat can bring us great joy. And that can be the truth of the matter. We love our cat more than any other person. Does that mean if God says cats are better for you than human beings, does that mean that message really came from God? If cats really do bring you joy, they do show you more love than human beings, and you perceive that to be the truth, is the message cats are better for you than human beings really the truth from God? Am I ad, ad nauseum on this point? Am I being ad nauseum? Like, what is truth? Hey? If you haven't got a standard, like the Ten Commandments, like the commandments in the Bible, like the commandments of Jesus, if you haven't got a standard to judge law, what is right, what is wrong, what is truth, what is error. If there is no truth, if truth is only something that you perceive, if truth is only something that you perceive to be the truth, if the goal lines were shifting all the time according to what people perceive to be the truth, how could we play this game called life? Okay. If a hundred cents make a dollar in Australian, if a hundred cents uh, make a dollar, and then some people say no, 95 cents makes a dollar, and some people say 85 cents makes a dollar, and all over my country, Australia, people are trading 85, 95, 100, as an equal measure of a dollar, the country would go crazy. And yet people come to such a matter as the truth and say it's up to your own perception. Now, your perception of truth isn't the truth. The truth is the truth. The truth has been constant and does not change since the beginning of time. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said that there's no truth found outside of him. That's a pretty big statement. Jesus was pretty big. In fact, we set our calendars based on the date Jesus was born and died. That's an exciting truth. It's not set on Muhammad's death. It's not set on the Buddha's death. It's not said on the Hindu God's death, the Hindu saint's death. It's said on Jesus Christ, the date all around the world. It's said on Jesus Christ's death. Someone who said he was the truth. There's something that brings you joy, eating pavlova. Something that you love, eating pavlova. Which is the truth, your favourite dessert in the world, eating pavlova. If God said, if a book said pavlova is good for you, you should enjoy it, it's the best sweet in the world. Is that the truth? Is that really God speaking? Because it brings you joy? Because you love it? Because it seems to be the truth? Does that really mean God was speaking? See, I could appeal to your feelings, but feelings are up and down. Some days you're happy with your best friend, sometimes you're very angry with your best friend. The fact is, the person is your best friend. What they do and things they do shouldn't change how you feel about them. Feelings can go up and down like the water. Feelings can go up and down like the ocean. If you get tossed about by feelings, there's no reality. <laughs> that's not the truth. The truth of the matter is, gravity exists. You can deny it all you like and try and jump off a building. You'll still hit the ground. That's the truth.